Hi, welcome to the walkthrough of RPA Genie. In this walkthrough, we will learn about the workflow activities. So to understand how these workflow activities work, we will create a few demo sequences. So for the first demo sequence, we will create some variables. So we will click on the variable panel and click on add variable and we will rename var1 to var a. Make sure the type is of integer and we will click on add variable again and create var b and make sure the, the type is of integer. Now we will drag and drop a multiple assign activity. The multiple assign activity allows assigning values to multiple variables simultaneously. So here in the input section, uh, we have to configure the assignments. So we need to click on assignments, click on add. In the to field, we need to give var a and here we can give any value. So I'll go add with uh, 10 and click on add again and the to field type var b and uh, the next value I'll give is 15 for var b. Uh, click on save. Now we'll drag and drop the assign activity. The assign activity enables you to assign value to a variable. So here in the to field we'll create a new variable called var c using control plus k. So and make sure the type is integer. Now value of var c should be the sum of var a and var b. So var a plus var b and we'll display, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see the value of RC in a message box. So I'll use a message box. RC. So I'm expecting, when I run the sequence, I'm expecting it to return 10 plus 15, 25. So var is 10 and var b is 15. And, uh, and the result will be assigned to this variable, which will display in a message box. So let's just run the sequence. Yeah, it does return 25. So this is the value of var c. So uh, after adding two values, uh, which is var a and var b, so it is return 25. Let's click on OK. And let's delete these activities. Next, we'll create a, a variable uh, called var list. So let's click on add variable. And create var list, the type would be a array list and we will create uh, a list over here using square brackets. We will give five elements for this uh, list. The first one is A, second one B, third C, D and fifth E. Next, we will drag and drop the for each item. The for each activity performs an action on each element from a collection of items. So here in the input field, um, our collection is var list, uh, and each element or item of the list will be assigned to this var item. So here I'll drag and drop a message box, and let's see what e uh, each element of the list is. Var item. So when we run the sequence it should display each element of the uh, collection. So here in the first run it has displayed A, then second B, third C, fourth D and fifth D. Now let's give a decision before the message box. Now there are two kind of decision, one is decision and, uh, and then another one is decision switch. When you have multiple conditions, uh, we need to we can use decision uh, switch. But here we are only going ahead with a single decision, so we will drag it and drop it here before the message box. And the condition is if var item equal to C, then we will break from the loop. So we will drag and drop a break. So the break activity exits from the for each activity and continues with the next activity that follows it. So here, uh, once we run the sequence, it will display A and B, but once it reaches C, it will exit from the for each activity. 
so let's see that so here it displayed a b and once it reached c it uh, exited from the uh, for each activity now next we will see uh, we'll replace the break uh, with continue so we'll delete this and drag and drop to continue activity the continue activity allows us to iterate the current state in, uh, inside a looping statement so what that means is uh, here if once uh, the var item equal equal is c it'll continue it'll skip the c and then it'll go on to the next item so it won't uh, so a b and then it'll skip the c part and then it'll display d and e so let's just see that let's run the sequence so in the first run uh, it uh, it's a it displayed a second and b so once it reaches c it continue to the next item so which is d so it's displaying d and then e all right perfect so here that is the uh, for each activity. Now uh, we will create a new sequence under this main process. In this main process we will drag and drop uh, an assign activity. In the to field we will create a new variable called var counter and we will change the type to integer. and the value we can give it as 1 next we'll drag and drop the loop activity loop activity iterates the set of statements until the condition is false so here we have to give a condition in the input view uh, the condition being var counter less than equal to 5 so here we have uh, created a, a, a var counter and a variable called var counter and we have assigned the value as 1 so when it is less than or equal to 5 we will drag a message box which will show the value of var counter and in each run it should increment the value so to increment the value we drag and drop the assign activity in the to field type var counter in the value field var counter plus one so here what we have done is we have created a new variable var counter and assigned a value one and here the condition is uh, as long as var counter is less than or equal to five it should keep displaying the value of uh, var counter and in each run the value of var counter will increase uh, will be incremented by one so let's see that click on save all and run the sequence so here 1 2 3 4 and 5 so the condition is true until here next let's over all right so next we'll see the we'll drag and drop the throw error activity and in the message field we will type uh, retrying the sequence. So the throw error activity throws an exception. So here we can give the me message uh, which will be shown in the output panel. Once we run the sequence, we can see it. And here in the on error block, we can drag and drop the retry the sequence error. So here, one, once it reaches here, once after executing all the steps, it will reach the through error. So it will go on the on error block and will retry the sequence. So we will retry it a total of two times. So now let's click on save all and run the sequence. So this is the first run. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Click on OK. So here we can see it has completed the, the initial steps. Then it reached the throw error and it threw, it threw an exception saying retrying the sequence and it came to the on error block and is retrying the sequence again, the entire thing from the beginning. So again 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Again uh, since we gave two times for it to retry, it's trying it again. So it started from the beginning 1, 
two, three, two, five. All right. So now what we'll do is, uh, since these two are two separate sequence, we can uh, integrate both these sequence in the main sequence. Uh, so I'll uh, there is an activity uh, invoke sequence, which I'll use it in the main sequence. So here I can close this as of now and we can invoke this sequence, uh, sequence 1 in the main sequence. So once it has executed all these activities, it will invoke the sequence. So let's see how that works. And after everything is done, we can give a right line. Uh, the right line activity writes a string to the output panel. So here the text you can give sequence run success. So click on save and we can run the main sequence. So here our first sequence ran, ran. so it was a list. So A, B, so it skipped the D since we gave quantity D, E. Then it invoked the sequence 1 which had the loop uh, activity. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then it's retrying it two more times. Yeah. And then it will, after invoking that sequence, it has executed the right line also. Here you can see success sequence run successfully so that's all for this video thanks so much